Welcome back. We are here on Ether looking at the commodities market and the precious metals market. And this is going to be my daily forecast for Wednesday, November 25th, 2020. If you'd like to join our channel, you're welcome to um, subscribe down here in the corner, hit the like button, the bell button in order to see our newest videos. And if you want the access to the full technical analysis for the full commodities market, um, you're welcome to join us over at Patreon. You'll also get access to our signal service as well. So let's start by looking at the US dollar index. And as you can see, we broke down uh, quite a bit in the trading session today. We ended up here at 92.15. And at this point, a rally is kind of expected for this market. And that will have uh, quite a lot of consequences, for example, for oil, expectedly, and also precious, precious metals, maybe. We'll see how that basically occurs, for example, in gold. Uh, but uh, as you can see, if we rally from here, then the 50 moving average is here at 93.21. A break above that opens the door to uh, 93.84, and then all the way up to this area here is 94.77. So at this point, the US dollar index has been fairly weak. Uh, we have tr tested this um, support area for several times now, um, and usually when you test something this often, we have a turnaround. Technical indicators for the US dollar index are also looking a little bit better. For example, the stochastic has crossed the signal line indicating bullish momentum. RSI, MACD is still underneath, CCI is still negative, and so is the RSI. But stochastic has turned around in this market. So a rally up to the 50 moving average, that is quite plausible at this point. So let's look at oil. As you can see, we have broken significant resistance today in the oil market. We can see that the previous resistance was at the 33.37, and at the moment we are trading at 40, uh, 44.82. And at this point, 45, that is plausible. We could also go all the way to 50, but 45 and 47.5 uh, there, or take a, uh, around that area there, it should be quite a lot of resistance. We are in a market that is, in my, in my view, significantly overstretched. There just isn't the demand out there at this point because the world economy is not in the same um, same stage as uh, prior to the coronavirus. And we, the virus is still out there and uh, most economies are uh, semi-locked down or are locked down. So at some point, I do believe that we are going to come crashing down again. And when we do, I think that the 50 moving average is probably uh, the, uh, the target here is at 40. So a fall from uh, 47, 45 down to, uh, to 40, that is quite plausible at this point. Technical indicators, uh, for example, the RSI are getting overbought. We are 68 at the moment, uh, but other indicators are still bullish. So as long as that is the case, this will continue to, in, uh, to increase. And uh, this just means that the fall will be bigger uh, when, we, when we eventually fall which is also highly expected. No interest in basically buying at this area here. I'm waiting to see how far we can basically go, see a weak candle, see the stochastic turnaround and also the CCI. Um, and that is basically the indication that we are going to go lower. So let's look at copper. So copper has rallied yet again today. We are getting very stretched in the copper market. Um, I never expected this to go this far. And, um, and at this point, I do believe that we'll just have a bigger fall uh, in the next coming weeks. We can see that RSI is at 69 at this point. We are on the edge of being overbought. Uh, but the other indicators are fairly bullish or are neutral at this point. So what I expect is a similar move like this, a gradual incline towards the 50 moving average around 3.0, uh, 3.1 or 
that area uh, is what I expect where we are going in the next coming weeks. No interest in basically buying this. I wasn't in, interested in buying it at this level because I thought it was way overvalued. But we managed to stretch it even further, and that means that we could basically have an, uh, basically a better trade towards the 50 moving average. So let's look at the gold. So gold fell significantly today, as was expected. This is what gold has been doing for, uh, well, months, all the way back to the beginning of August. We had this massive decline. We traded sideways, another massive decline in the beginning of September, then uh, traded sideways until it rallied a few weeks ago, broke down again, and then now we have our uh, third and probably final major decline. We could go further, but this is the 200 moving average, and we are at the 1800 level. This is where we broke out a few months ago, all the way up towards 2100, and now we have declined all the way down towards the 200 moving average. We could pierce the 200 moving average. I don't expect us to do, but if we do and start trading underneath the 200 moving average, then that opens the door to um, 1750 and probably also down to 1700. That is to be seen. I don't expect that to happen. One reason uh, I don't expect that to happen is because we are almost oversold at this point. We're at 32 and um, we haven't been this low for a long, long, long time in this market. We've basically been selling off all the way since August. We have been in a downtrend and that could be coming to an end. I'm not saying that we're going uh, straight up into the air here. We could be trading sideways and gradually go in higher, break the 50, and then start trading above the 50 moving average and then grind us towards the 2000 level. There are going to be uh, more stimulus package packages um, in 2021 and probably for before 2020, maybe. Uh, and that will and will also have additional monetary policy for from the central banks, which will push this market higher. Um, technical indicators for gold at this point are still looking fairly bearish. They are. So we could have an increase from here. That is possible. And that is also what I expect. A break below the 200 moving average, of course, opens the door to much, much lower levels, all the way down to uh, 1750 and then 1700. So Let's look at Kakoa. Kakao. We rallied all the way from 2.238 up to 2.816. And at this point, we have a really nasty hammer here. And this is probably the end of this rally. If we get another red candlestick underneath this, candle, uh, this hammer here, that is basically a sign that we are going to go significantly lower. So the question is, how low will we go? If you look at the Fibonacci retracements, then the first Fibonacci retracement is at 2.594. But I think that we're going down here. 2.523 is where I expect this market to go. And that would also coincide with the 50 moving average traveling up this way and also the 200 moving average. Technical indicators for this commodity is are looking very very bad at this point we are overbought cci is turning around sarcastic is turning around it is just a macd that it hasn't turned around yet but that will happen really quickly when these indicators are starting and when we start to fall so i'm definitely not a buyer here this is a market that i'm looking forward to basically selling if we get the right candlestick uh, uh the next trading days so Hopefully you find this video helpful. You're welcome to subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button down in the corner. Hit the like button and the bell button in order to see our newest videos. And you're welcome to join us over Patreon. You get access to our full technical analysis of all the commodities on here on Etero. So good luck and thank you very much.